sleepapnea.org presents Portraits, Living with Sleep Apnea, a conversation with Ari Burwald. Ari, what was life like before your diagnosis? Um, so before I was diagnosed with sleep apnea, um, I had, as it turns out, many of the telltale signs, such as um, emotional dysregulation, uh, depression, anxiety, trouble sleeping, um, some sort of cognitive issues uh, it became very, at, at a certain point, it became very difficult for me to do the level of math that I could before, just because my brain was not operating at its normal level. When did you know that something was wrong? It's hard to say exactly when sleep apnea kind of happened. Um, it's possible that it was an in, in, in utero thing or that it had, you know, somehow during early childhood. Um, and I wasn't really diagnosed until 30. So what did I think was happening? Well, I went to several um, psychologists and psychiatrists, and obviously their area of expertise is in depression, anxiety, et cetera. So that's what they thought it was. And at the time, I saw really no reason to disagree with that because I was anxious and I was depressed. What was the rock bottom moment? I'm not sure that there was any sort of specific rock bottom moment. It was more, it was almost like my sub, so I had been, it had been suggested to me that I might have sleep apnea. Um, and, but it took me a couple, a couple of years of just having that in my subconscious. And then it was suggested to me again. And for reasons that I'm not really sure, uh, I just decided to look into it at that time. After unsuccessful treatment, what was your condition? Continued uh, unhappiness, and after you know many years of many failed treatments, I'd go on one sort of psychiatric medication. It wouldn't work. Started off with a whole bunch of, you know, went through the SSRIs, then went to some kind of second line defenses like the um, tricyclics, and then the uh, MAOIs. And you know, sometimes they would not work at all, or they would work for a very brief period of time. And it was just like this is I'm not getting anywhere. You know, I'm still stuck in the in the mud here. How was being impaired cognitively impacting your life? You know, I'd always been fairly good at math, you know, not like Einstein level, but fairly good. And there was, you know, several years where I just really couldn't do anything. It's like my short, my short term, short term memory was also severely impaired. Um, could hardly remember things, uh, you know, even like remembering a phone number or something was, wow, it's a big challenge. And, um, and especially I noticed it in my math abilities. Um, so that's where the main impairments were in terms of cognitive function. Though in terms of actually impacting my life, it was definitely the emotional aspects. Uh, that was by far and large the biggest negative impact on my life. What did your diagnosis mean to you? So the first sleep study I got uh, put me between moderate and severe. And, you know, in some ways it was kind of depressing to hear, oh no, sleep apnea. But on the other hand, since I'd been kind of drifting aimlessly trying to figure out what was the problem, it was actually very comforting to know that, okay, here is, okay, this, this is a problem, right? This is my problem. So now I can uh, approach it head on. I kind of know the enemy I'm fighting at this point. So that was kind of a relief. What has been your experience with CPAP therapy? I'm still waiting for my first great night of sleep. <laughs> I haven't had a great night of sleep in at least 20 years. Um, however, with, with CPAP, um, it, it took an adjustment period. I can't, it was, I know there's some stories, people, they put it on the next morning, you're like, oh my God, my life has changed. Uh, for me, it was, kind of a minor effect, and it was, again, spread over several months, weeks to months. And as it kind of turns out, um, a lot, uh, the reason the CPAP helped me was because of the medication I was on at the time to, for my insomnia, clonazepam, which was also producing a lot of additional brain fog. 
And when I discontinued the clonazepam, my sleep improved enough to the point that the CPAP machine, the cost-benefit analysis, the costs outweighed the benefit at that point. Ari, what are some benefits of attending the Awake Together Summit? There's, uh, there's a number of benefits to coming to a conference like this. Um, one of which is the community. It's always good to know that you're not alone and to get additional perspectives. Um, so, you know, for other reasons in my life, I felt very alienated and just having this kind of sense of community um, is just emotionally, it's very helpful, I feel. Um, some other benefits are, well, I did learn about some new treatments, which I'm always keeping my eyes open for because I consider my sleep apnea or sleep disorders to be not well treated. And so the new treatments, that's a good thing. Um, I especially like the push towards the almost multiple doctors from multiple specialties at one time. Uh, so I feel that if that had been available for me, say 20 years ago when I first entered the um, psychology, psychiatric arena, if there had been a sleep specialist present at that, they would have put in their own ideas, say, hey, yes, he might be depressed and anxious, and maybe that's causing his sleep disturbances, or maybe it's the sleep disturbances causing the depression and anxiety. And you know, I have no idea if that would have helped me, but I feel like it would probably could have made a, a big difference in my life at a much earlier stage. Uh, so that, that's a really great thing, and I hope that they, that really gets moved forward and expanded to the whole medical field because, you know, the human body is not one, it's not a bunch of isolated systems. It's an integrated system with lots of feedback loops. You know, everything is connected to everything else, and it's really kind of being ignorant to ignore that aspect, the just the simple reality. Yes, it's more complex, but that's reality, and so that's what we have to deal with, not these idealized systems. To learn more, visit sleepapnea.org now.